Hi friends. Today, day two of our beautiful little drawing here. And I am going to first start with, so I'm using my 140 pound cold press paper. I am using a little bigger sheet, so I'm not using the Artisto pads. Although I did just order some of their larger uh, spiral bound pads, so I'm kind of excited to get those because I just absolutely love that paper. I know I share it with you all the time. Um, it's these, although I noticed when I ordered, kind of fun, they changed their um, image on their pads and I'll show you when I get them. It's really beautiful. It's got a lot of that beautiful Quinn magenta and purples. So today, this is an Arches, uh, but I'm looking forward to getting those Artisto pads in the little bit larger size. And because we're doing a tropical theme here, I'm going to be using, let's see, I'm gonna say our Cad Red. So I always suggest you get your colors ready in your palette first because if we're working wet on wet, you have to work a little bit fast and you don't wanna to have to be waiting to mix colors. So this is our first color, this Cad Red for these beautiful hibiscus. If you didn't see part one yesterday, I drew them for you and I'll link that below. And then we'll also use our Cad Yellow because to me, nothing uh, kind of exemplifies that beautiful hibiscus here in California anyway, than this color. And then yesterday I was Googling around and I found this color, not used on a hibiscus, but um, for some tropical uh, leaves and things. And I thought I would give it a try. So here it is, it's called, let's see. And this is actually Daniel Smith. This isn't Winsor Newton, which I usually use. This is called Quinacridone coral so let's just see what that looks like it looked really pretty in the um the little picture that i saw um i don't want to put that whole dot on my page let's just put it in my palette here Ooh, that is pretty reminds me a lot of um it looked a little oranger in the photo but that's okay um Let's see what it looks like next to the Cad Red. Ooh, that is pretty. It's a little bit pinker. Yeah, I like that a lot, actually. It might be hard to pick up in the camera here, but um, it's got a little bit pinker tone to it. And then, of course, as always, I use my um, olive green and my sap green mixed together for my greens. Although, because this is a tropical plant, I feel like I could add a little bit of blue in there <clears throat> because what I've noticed is some of the plants down, you know, that are in the tropics because it's so wet, they just seem to have a little bit more blue in them. So I'll play with that variety. I'm mixing in here a cerulean blue and I quite like that. Yeah, that's really pretty. It's a very nice, cool green. And uh, sometimes I get kind of stuck on that olive green. I really like it, but um, I think these are really pretty. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'm using my Degato brush today, but you could certainly use your um, number eight round Princeton. I'm gonna put a tiny, well, let's wait. I don't wanna waste this. So that coral color is Quinn Coral, Quinacridone Coral, and it's actually Daniel Smith, not, not Windsor Newton, which is what I normally use. I've got my two containers of water, one to wash, one to rinse, and I have sprayed all my paints ahead of time to get them activated in my uh, palette here. If you have the My Lane palette, that's just fine too. A lot of the colors are very similar and I, you know how much I love that My Lane palette. But today I am using the Windsor Newton. Okay, let's get started. 
<clears throat> I'm going to be doing a lot of wet in wet here, but what I want to first do, and I drew this a little bit darker than I might normally because I wanted you to be able to see it. So I've got my three um, kind of focus elements, although I did make this one a little bit smaller for interest. They're all facing different directions to kind of lead and pull and guide your eye. What will be important as always is to vary the values so that um, it doesn't just look flat in all the same color, right? And then this here, I didn't draw in all the leaves, but uh, this will be kind of like a little palm leaf coming out here. All right, I'm going to start with a light um, wash of that cad yellow. So let me just pick a little bit of that up in my palette here. Yeah. There we go. And I want it to be quite light because this is just a kind of a glaze for the petals. We're gonna be going in with some red as well. So going in with a very light glaze of that Quinn yellow here. And I'm even leaving some white Okay, and then I'll go in and pick up a little bit of my CAD orange. And making sure you don't have too much water on your brush, just tapping it off. And I'm using the tip and just the top and the tip. Okay, I'm not using the full belly. And just going in here and adding that in and letting it spread. What I noticed as well in these hibiscus, I always try to find what's, to me, somewhat representative of flowers. And what I noticed is these hibiscus are very much curved. So I wanna follow these lines because that gives you the feel of a hibiscus aside from, of course, this little stamen coming out here, but um, I always try and somewhat find what reminds me, like in the poppy, that black center and the little black dots, that's very representative of a poppy and recognizable. Okay, so I'm going in with that glaze, then I'll pick up a little bit of that orange and just touch in and really just let the uh, watercolors do their thing there. I just washed and rinsed my brush and I'm going to pull that a little, maybe pick up a little bit of that paint, there we go. And I'm going to do the same thing on the rest of these petals. Now you might want to wait just a bit because if I touch into that petal next to that, it's going to bleed together. So I might give it a little bit of space there. See, it's bleeding a little bit right there, which is okay. I'm not going to fret over that. And then go in with my orange again and tap in just with the tip of my brush. Make sure if you're not sure if you have um, too much water on your brush, you can always dab off. You don't want there to be like a drip. I actually really like the way this one bled there. So I'm just going to add a little bit more water on that one. But I'm following that rounded um, kind of pattern there because that makes you say, oh yeah, that's a hibiscus aside from this little guy. Okay, let's keep going. Picking up some more of that yellow, making sure it's a very light value. So you've got a lot of water in there. And we will come back and add some shadows in here because a little bit of that petal is hidden under that leaf. I missed my lines there and then touching in just like that. 
And this, you guys, is the beauty and why I just love watercolors because it really does this on its own. I'm just tapping in and I'm letting the watercolors spread and do their thing. Let's move on to our next one. And I will again start with that yellow. And I might just have in my mind, I want this front flower to have a little darker value just because it's in front. So I might do that. More yellow, I'm gonna keep moving on to all of these. And I'm working rather quickly because I am working wet and wet. So you have to work a little bit quicker. Now I'll go into my orange. Add a little, oop, oh, add a little water there. And then just <clears throat> dragging my brush. And again, if you're not sure if you have too much water, just tap off and it'll, it'll remove some of that water. Going in again, tapping in here and there. Look how beautiful, so easy. That's one thing I love about the wet and wet because it really creates these beautiful spreads and blooms on its own. There we go. Yeah, I like that. While we're letting all that dry, I might just tap in to the center there. It kind of gets deep in there. This might be a good place to use that coral, uh, that quin coral. Although I, looking at that, it's a little bit pinker and lighter. Well, let's see what happens when we put that. Maybe that'll be really pretty. Yeah, actually that's very pretty. Because you wanna create that feeling of the flowers kind of sinking into the middle there. And just tapping onto some of those petals. Yeah, I quite like that. So I think I will use that Quinn Coral in the center. I may come back and darken it even more and then draw up some of that into the petals of the flower here. And maybe just keep that one more orangies. So look how pretty that is. And because I'm using a darker value here, look at how beautiful that blended. Again, the beauty of watercolor. Um, this I kind of left. I really don't want to blend this out too much. I'm rather liking those whites, but I might just fade it a little bit. So I'm wiping my brush and just pulling a little bit of that away. Okay, keep going here. Need a little bit more of that yellow. And to lighten the value of your yellow, you just add a little bit of water. And then tap it off if you need to on your paper towel. I'm removing a lot just by tapping the side of my well there, but there we go. And I think I'll leave a little bit more white on that curve of the petal because I think that kind of represents the uh, fact that there's a highlight there. And then go back to my orange, pick up some of that, tap off, and let's just go in and add and let it blend like that. Yeah, that's really pretty. I'm really liking this. I thought this Quinn coral would be so pretty on some uh, tropical leaves. You know how tropical leaves, a lot of times they'll have that beautiful red or pinkish color in them. And so I was looking at 
these plants online, pictures and things, and I thought, ooh, that would be a really nice color. There we go. Okay, that's really pretty, I like that. I'm just pulling out some of that. I don't wanna play with it too much, I wanna kind of allow the watercolors to work in there. Going to go on to my last couple petals here and notice this curve. And I might add in some shadow here. Go back to that. I need a little bit more of that Quinn Coral. There we go. Yeah, that's a really pretty color. It's the perfect color for a petal and for a leaf. Yeah, that's pretty. Hmm, really nice. I had one of you tell me in, uh, gosh darn, I don't remember where they said they were at now, but they were talking about how beautiful the poinsettias are there. I'm, I'm in the uh, hibiscus, and that they came in all different colors, not just this reddish. I see a lot around here of the red and the yellow, and then I've seen a white variety with bright pink in the uh, center, which I think would be really pretty too. So there we go washing and drying my brush and I think I'll just pick up a little bit of that and maybe pull out some of this just to help it spread a little. Yeah, I quite like that. So look at how beautiful that is. That now, I love that, I love that color. I'm debating what I want to do back here. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and paint this one just using that same technique. And notice this third one. I'm using the rule of odds here, just meaning I'm, for composition, I'm using a three. That to me always just seems so much more organic. And I'm going to keep this flower here a little bit paler so it looks like it's behind these two. If I can keep that in mind while I'm painting here, that's a little bit of what I'm trying to do. Although that just came out quite vibrant, didn't it? There we go. And I am a fan of this white space, so that's just how I paint. I think it creates such interest and allows your viewer to kind of fill in. So that's one of the reasons why I always appreciate the white space in paintings because I just think it's such a great opportunity for your viewer to see what they wanna see and to fill in that space. And what I'll hear that people see a lot of times isn't quite what I envisioned which is beautiful. Okay, so I like that one being a little bit in the back and a little bit lighter. I'm going to go in and add a little bit more red. Let me grab some of that cad red here. And let me move this and fill my well here. So that cad red and that Quinn coral are really, really uh, close in color. The Quinn coral definitely has more of a pinkish tone to it. Okay. And let's just go in here and add in just to the center and coming out. And I think these lines are really important because again, that's very 
much to me what a poinsettia looks like. I don't know why I keep calling this a poinsettia. Getting my penguins and my, my uh, flamingos. Now I'm calling today, I'm calling these poinsettias. These are hibiscus, of course. So I went in and darkened that center. Look how beautiful that is. I might go in here as well. And following these lines. And then I'm going to go back in and darken that center even more. I might even do it while it's wet. There we go. Look how beautiful and so easy, you guys. If you want, I have, I will put this tutorial up um, on Etsy, but I can also get you this drawing. Now I'm going into just the tiniest bit of my Payne's Gray. I use that instead of a black. Actually, what I'm gonna try right now is a purple tone for that center because purple and um, these oranges in that are a little bit of a complementary color, so they'll make a dark, deep color. So let's just go in and paint that center. Ooh, I love that. Look at that. That is really interesting. There you go. So that draws your eye in. It makes you feel like that flower is going deep into the middle there. And then just a very light coat of that. So a light value of that red, a little bit darker, I guess. That didn't show up. On this one, same thing. Because I'm hoping that one fades a little bit more into the background. Okay, now before we do any of these little pistols and the stamens, let's go in and um, let these dry and then go ahead and work on our leaves. So I'm going to, this is a really pretty color too. This color is, let's see, I think that's, I almost want to say like a Viridian or a Hooker's Green. I used up that color, so I don't have it in my palette any longer, but it's like a blue-green, which I love. And let's go ahead and create this leaf coming out. There we go. I'm going to add just a little bit more water, like that. Here's another one and this one. Now this would be the perfect place where if you wanted to play with um, masking fluid, I know in the past when I've painted these flowers, I've masked out all these little tiny white, actually we'll make them yellow areas. This is the perfect place to use something like that. but. For the sake of time, I did not do that today. And then just tapping in, there we go. So pretty. Let's add in just a tiniest bit of blue right here and see what that does. Yeah, I like that. And we'll go ahead with our palm leaf over here picking up my uh, sap green and my olive green. The other thing I noticed with um, these, uh, any tropical leaves is the center pieces. They're quite thick, which I think is kind of fun. Oh, I have a little leaf I think I'm gonna put in back here too. There we go. I actually, I think what I'll do is go back in and lighten that. So here is just using the tip of my brush, very light precious, all pressure, always anchoring my uh, wrist here. And then let's just start using that compound stroke. So point, 
press just like that. Point, press like that. Create a couple in the background here. Maybe coming out. Tucked behind that flower. Point, press. There we go. Point, press. Moving on, point, press. I think I'll let those dry a tiny bit there. Point, press. So you're just repeating that point, press. And then maybe play with those values. So darkening that value, just meaning that you have less water. Point, press, point, press, point, press, point, press. There we go. Isn't that pretty? I love that. Point, press, point, press. There we go. And when this dries a bit, I might go in with a really dark value on this end. Let's try it now. Point, press. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Maybe do a little leaf here. Coming out from behind. Something like that. I noticed my, the hibiscus, I had one in here yesterday and was kind of sad to see it uh, didn't open back up overnight. And then maybe a very light value one in the back. There we go. Okay, let's go on to the leaves on the other side, picking up that same color, making sure I don't put my hand in that. And again, Unless you went ahead and want to use some masking, I'm just going to use the tip of my brush and kind of go around those little dots. There we go. And using the side of my brush, push, come up to the tip, go around here. There we go. Tip of my brush. There we go. And I love how this is a lighter value. What I will probably do is go in there and just darken it a tad in here because that's where it's kind of coming out of the flower. And then just let that spread. We've got another leaf over here. Again, I'll have to navigate just a tad around these little dots here. Yeah, I like that. Okay. And then darkening up where it's coming out of from behind the flower is going to create just that little bit of a feeling of shadow. Might just help it here with some push pull. You've seen me use this a lot. I love it. Just kind of feathers that edge. You can even help it a little bit. There we go. Okay. Isn't that pretty? Now let's go in and draw in these uh, other parts of our flower because I think this is quite dry. And I'm going to do mine, I think I, this is where I might play with that coral. So let's get that out. I'm just gonna, I don't normally paint like this, but I don't have an empty well right now to put this new paint in. Normally I wouldn't dig it out like that, but 
yeah, definitely. So you can see the cad red in this is just a tiny bit pinker. I think it's perfect for this piece coming out here. And actually, darn, what I wanna do is let's wet that first so we get a bleed. There. I just, I never like that hard line. It's just, I always like a soft, that's what I, why I love watercolors. Okay. And then let's use a wet brush, just the tip. Make sure anything else you're touching isn't wet paint. And then let's just go in and lay a little bit of that in. There we go. And our last one here, wash and damp, use a damp brush and just draw that in. There we go. And come back in. There, yeah, I quite like that. And then for the, the little dots, I'm going to use <clears throat> my Cad Yellow. You might even add a tiny bit of gold in there. It could be pretty too. I'm picking up a little gold here. And then let's just go in and just dab. So holding your brush straight up and down. And you could have this a little damper than normal if you wanted. At the ends, these three little pieces are a little bit bigger. And there you go. Go in and do these, just little dots. There we go. Look how pretty that is. And then these as well. This is a tiny bit wet, so I might just wait to get those dots up in the leaves. I don't want it to smear. Now I'm just adding a tiny bit of yellow to that. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty. I like that. Um, I have these little fun pieces over here, so let's go ahead and paint those, and I will use, I'm going to do the stems first. Tapping off to make sure I don't have too much water on there. And let's go in. And barely using the tip of my brush, I'm just going to paint in all these little fine little pieces and pick up that same color, the green gold. and tap in. Yeah, I like that. This is a good little filler. I talk about these fillers a lot. So this is the perfect filler for this. I think that's really pretty. Go in, do a little bit more of that green. and draw our stems, just the lightest pressure using the tip of my brush, anchoring my wrist on the paper, wash and rinse my brush, and pick up a little bit of that cad yellow and that yellow ochre, and paint these in. I just thought that putting these fillers in and using this color might bring that yellow throughout our painting. The other thing I wanted to do is maybe just add not too much because I want these to remain the focus, which they are because they're a different color. Um, but I felt like it's important to have some different values in here. So let me just look at this and see if I want to 
We could add a few of these little things, maybe down here. Let's try that and see what that looks like. So picking up my green and let's continue that and maybe coming out here and then with some of our little branches, little stems and we'll add, no, it's hard to see that in the, uh, this lighting, isn't it? And I'm picking up some of my yellow ochre and my cad yellow, and let's just color in those little filler flowers. There we go. I think that kind of creates some flow there. Okay, I think we're about done here. Um, you could go in if you really wanted to and use that push-pull technique and go into, I don't want to put my hand in there, these petals. And just darken those edges. Now I'm washing and rinsing my brush and drying it off so it's barely damp. Got to be careful not to touch that. And then just go in and pull out a little bit of that. Just soften, rinse, wipe my brush so it's barely damp. Oh, see, I just stuck my hand in that. And just touching the very, very edge and pulling that out. There you go. And you could certainly do that around this entire flower. Maybe even going in here to the center. Now I've got a little bit too much because I see I've got a bit of a puddle there. So I'm going to tap off on my paper towel and just do like this. There we go. Yeah, I like that. And then maybe we'll add in a little there. I have to be so careful that I'm not touching that. I was going to do some shadows too, which I think are kind of important. There we go. So we could in, add in just a bit of a shadow right there. Let's see, let's use some blue because that would be the opposite. So I added a little bit, I took the orange color that I used here and just added in a tiny bit of blue to make it a shadowy color because those are opposites on the color wheel. And then let's just do a little wash here of around here. So it looks like there's a shadow there. And you could even do that a little bit here. Pick up some more of that orange with the blue in it. creates a wonderful shadowy color when you mix opposites like that. Yeah, I quite like that. Okay, well, I'm gonna leave this at that. Uh, feel free to add more detail into yours. I kind of like this. And um, I hope you guys give this a try. It's a lot of fun. You could maybe even add in another leaf here. You know, you could do some fun things here, but I quite like this in its simplicity. And I will have this up on um, as an Etsy kit. And what you'll get is the drawing, a color swatch, some of the brush strokes, 
and a uh, image to download of the original as well. And make sure if you guys like this, um, just like hit the like button because I go through and I, I paint what I want to paint, but I also kind of gauge it on what you guys are enjoying. And um, thank you so much for your pictures you're sending me and things like that. I'm really enjoying those. You guys are so, so good. I just am so surprised by some of the things that um, you're sending me because you're telling me you're beginners and what you're sending me is just absolutely beautiful. And my last little um, thing I might mention is for those of you that will be in my small semi-private Zoom class this Tuesday, I can't wait to meet you. And I think that's all. So thank you everybody for being here. I'm so excited to share this with you and I will see you soon. I will list all my supplies in the description and I'll also put part one, which was the drawing for this um, link down below in case you wanna go back to that. All right, everybody have a great day. I'll see you soon.